So understanding the market, it is a moving target. Um, you know, the market changes and um, the current environment, since COVID, there's been three major paradigm shifts in the way people buy houses. Number one, people are buying houses sight unseen. That means they saw a video, they put a bid in and they win the house. Um, that was not happening prior to COVID, only for relocation people, uh, you know, corporate relo relocations across the country, things of that nature. The second paradigm shift was people were actually um, waiving all inspections. So that is not something I want to advise any client to do. Um, however, clients were doing that left and right just to win in a bidding war with 20 other offers. Um, and then the third paradigm shift was meeting the appraisal gap uh, for what's under contract and what it appraises at. So the appraisals have been coming in low because the prices have been going up so fast. So let's just use an example. If you are under contract and said, hey, I'll pay 500 grand for this house and the appraisal comes in low at 475, you would have to tell them prior to them accepting the offer, I will bring $25,000 up to meet that gap out of my pocket cash at the table. And that's been happening. So those are three major shifts that happened during COVID, the way people are buying homes. Um, it is a hyper seller's market. That just means if you're selling, you have all the leverage. If you do it right, you get to dictate all your terms. There's a lot of things you can do. I could do a whole presentation on that, but um, it's, it's, the, it's been the best time to sell a home. Uh, it's been a hyper seller's market for the last five years. Um, why is that? the universal law of supply and demand. There's not enough homes for sale and there's way too many buyers trying to buy. Um, the reason there's so many buyers is because of low interest, interest rates. So interest rates being at historic lows, uh, that, that's just created a lot more people getting in to try and buy and take advantage of money that's only at you know, 2.4, 2.3 or, or, or you know, some of those crazy low rates. Um, they're still pretty low. I think today was about three, two, um, I saw. But anyway, and then also um, millennials are aging up and millennials are having families. So millennials actually make up 60% of the buying market. And that's good to know because a lot of millennials uh, both work and they have good jobs and they're people of means. So they're strong buyers. And so that's good for sellers. Um, home values are rising. If you saw a graph, it would have just hockey sticked last year. And just to give you a, a, a real uh, example, my business partner, Steve Larratt, he bought a home, a single family home in Westchester last October um, at uh, $300,000. And so he didn't put a penny into it. He was buying an investment property, put renters in there. Again, didn't put a dime in it. He refinanced eight months later and it, re it reappraised for $412,000. That is $112,000 of equity gain. And he did a cash out refi and he's going to buy another property with that money. So it's uh, that kind of home value, that kind of rise in home value is not sustainable. We don't foresee that happening um, year after year. It just, it just wouldn't be able to sustain. But Steve caught lightning in a bottle in that one. And it's just been pretty nuts in that way. Um, and then the curtain environment, there are pockets of it slowing down. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of people going on vacations. That's typical for the summer. And then you have a whole pool of buyers that have been slugging it out for six months and they haven't gotten their uh, offers accepted. And they put in, you know, 11 offers and saw 50 houses and they're just going, you know what, this isn't the right time to buy for us. We're just going to get out. So there are pockets of it slowing down. Um, but there, you know, it's, it will be ramping up again in the third and fourth quarter. Those are generally great quarters for realtors. So how do I win big in a hyper seller's market when I am selling? So number one thing, using the correct pricing strategy. Um, this only, you know, you have to, you have to do your strategy according to what's going on in the market. So let's talk about who sets market value of your house. Is it you, the seller? Is it your realtor? Is it the bank appraiser? Well, it's actually none of those things. It's the person that shows up with the money to buy it. You know, only that will determine the market value, aka what the market will bear. 
And it's not really an exact science, but we just use the most recent data and the best data on hand that we can in order to try and make the best decision for you as far as pricing. So how do we set the asking price? Um, in this type of market, you should underprice your home by two to three percent. And so if you want 500, you should price it at 485. Now, I know that's going to sound crazy to people, but it absolutely works. Um, we, uh, your asking price is simply your best marketing tool. You're creating a heightened demand by manipulating the price and lowering the price. You're really squeezing the market because the more people that are interested in your home, the more money you'll get for your home. The more people bidding on your home at one time, the more the price will escalate. And this becomes an auction mentality. And when you think about auctions, they don't start high and come down low. They start really low and they go up and up. And what happens is people start losing their minds and they make an emotional decision because they have to get it because they're not negotiating against you, the seller. They're negotiating against all the other people that are trying to win the bid. So underpricing is a great strategy. Um, it works really well. Days on market, the amount of days your home is on the market, is that a friend or a foe? Well, for you, the seller, it's absolutely a foe. Um, if, if you overprice it, it's going to bring you less money. So when we talk about days on market, um, if someone saw a house that was lingering on the market for 30 days, they would go, huh, I wonder what's wrong with that house. And they just assume something is wrong when in fact, it could literally just be overpriced. So you could stigmatize your own property by having something wrong, uh, the, the perception of, of buyers thinking there's something wrong when simply it's just overpriced. Um, and again, uh, just a good example, last week we sold a house in Glen Mills and our sellers, they wanted 625 for it. And they said, our walkaway number, our low number is six. We won't take any less than six. And so we said, hey, can we price it at six? We, we know how to manipulate the market. They trusted us. We ended up getting them 668 in two days. So that's, we priced it at 600,000. And in two days, we got 14 offers and we got them a high price of 668. So, you know, again, I know that underpricing feels uncomfortable to some people. At the end of the day, as a fiduciary, we advise you guys, but you guys make the decision on how to do that. All right. Number three, what to fix and what not to fix. So this can be a rabbit hole. Where do you start and where do you stop? Um, so some of the things, there's some rules of thumb. Usually you get your money back all day long for painting. If you paint and impart a sense of new and everything, uh, when buyers walk through your home, you'll get your money back for paint. Flooring and carpet, if the areas are small, um, it's always a good idea. If you had 2,300 square feet of carpet that wasn't beat up, but you just thought, maybe I'll change it out, I would suggest maybe just cleaning it, having it restretched, because the carpet you choose might not be the carpet that the buyers choose, or they might want to rip it out and put uh, laminate floors in. So in some cases, it's a waste of money, but if it's not a large space, you know, it's always a good idea. And then I can't stress enough, and you'll hear me say it a couple of times, professional cleaning. Get professional cleaners in your house before you put it on the market. Scrub the baseboards, scrub all the window ledges and all that stuff. That's just a great thing. Um, and then if you're going big, like if you're really, okay, I want to invest in my home and extract the most money out of it, um, adding a bedroom or a bathroom will gain you the most money back for your purchase. So if you add a bedroom or a bathroom, you know, and again, those are, this is if you're, if you're going big. Um, also adding a patio space or outside space, um, even a little before COVID, but since COVID, an outside patio space has become paramount for buyers. They really, really want that space. Um, and then redo the kitchen. So this one really depends. Uh, I was just in a home advising clients and they said, hey, we're going to redo all these kitchen cabinets and repaint them all just to spruce it up. And their kitchen was really nice and really clean, but it was super dated. And I just said, do not do that. Don't waste your time doing that. The cabinets are clean. They look great. They go with this kitchen and someone's going to come in and want to redo the whole kitchen. So I, I advise them not to do it. So again, what to fix and what not to fix. 
it really takes an in-person consultation with your realtor because every home is just so vastly different. All right, some staging tricks. Clean and declutter. I can't say clean and declutter enough. Um, it's the psychology of the first impression. You know, neat and clean will always impart a good first impression. And that's all we get. When you think of this, buyers are walking through your home for a half hour, 45 minutes at max before they decide to buy it. And so we only have that little 45 window, 45 minute window or half hour window to make a first impression. Um, again, I say it again, have your home professionally cleaned. Um, if you have pets or you smoke cigarettes in there or cigars or anything, that is going to equal less money if it still smells like that in your home. Smell is a huge thing for buyers. Um, I've walked into homes with buyers that are gorgeous. Smells like a wet dog. We're turning around and we're walking out. We're not even looking. Um, a home that is cared for and, and you know, with some, with some, you know, not, with some maintenance items, like you have a newer roof and the boilers updated and things like that. A home that's clean and cared for, but it's outdated. Like the kitchen might be outdated, but it's clean. You know, buyers will totally overlook that stuff as long as it's clean and as long as it's kind of move in ready. They're like, you know what, we'll fix that in time and we'll do it when we want to do it with what we want. And so, you know, an old and unmaintained and a you know, dirty home, that's just going to that's going to get you less money. Um, again, in a perfect world, uh, and this is more work, but in a perfect world to get the most money, if you can rent a storage space or one of those pods they drop off at your house and take about two thirds of your stuff out of your house. And you're, if you're moving anyway, this is your, your pre-move and you take two thirds out of your, out of your house, that helps your, your home feel so much bigger. We do this to clients all the time. They end up moving two thirds of their stuff out and they're like, I think I want to stay. I love my house. And so uh, it's really funny, the, the reaction of, of people that do that. But, um, you know, a, a larger space will just feel bigger and better to buyers walking through. Um, you definitely want to just box up all your knickknacks. Uh, you're moving anyway, so get those uh, you know out of the way a little more free and clear. Um, your kitchen, when showing, should have you know any like hardly anything on the counter. Just really put everything away, and when you use it, um, you know you can you can put it out while you use it. But you know like a Keurig and things like that that you use daily, okay. But like a KitchenAid mixer, maybe put that in the pantry. Um, and, you know, if, if you display having the most amount of counter space, that will just impart that, hey, this place has a ton of counter space, and that's good for our first impression. Um, in rooms, we want to leave the anchor pieces. So uh, a bed in a bedroom, uh, a couch in a living room, a desk in an office. If you can do that, that's the best thing to do, because you want the buyer to walk through and be able to envision the space um, if they go through uh, an empty place, which if, if that's the way it has to be, that's okay. But if they go through an empty space, their eyes are drawn to the imperfections in the walls or the paint or something like that. And so, you know, really, if you can leave the anchor pieces, it's such a better play and sort of a staging thing to, to have them walk through and just to get them right on the first impression. Um, and if this is too much work, like if that sounds like, oh, I can't handle all that, then just concentrate on neat and clean and decluttering. If you can get things neat and clean and decluttering, if you have a storage area like a garage, you can move some furniture that when things feel tight, you can move some furniture out to your garage. Storage is fine to be moved into the storage areas and the storage areas can be filled with stuff and that's okay when selling. Um, so what we're just really trying to do is get the most money with the least amount of hassle. And so, Professional photos, videos, and marketing strategy, this is huge. We pay for all marketing materials, so we will pay for a professional photographer to come in. I'm not doing it on my cell phone. We actually pay a professional photographer to come in. We'll do a professional video. Buyers today and you know the, the, the young millennials that make up 60% of the buying pool, they love watching a video. They'd rather watch a video almost uh, than, you know, some, than look through pictures. Uh, social media marketing is huge, you know, so we will pay for advertising on social media marketing and, uh, you know, many, that's where many buyers live. We will still do the traditional open houses because they have been working really well. And uh, I have an example of a listing video that I'd like to play for you. And so here you go. Hello friends, Chris Hole here coming to you from my new listing, 110 Ferry Lane in lovely Phoenixville, PA.
with three bedrooms, two baths, 2,000 square feet, and a one acre lot. This is a great find in the Phoenixville area. A sweet brand new kitchen addition with tons of natural love. And a nice little butler's pantry. A nice sized dining room right off the pantry leading right to your living room. And a full Jack and Joe bathroom on the first floor. Spacious master bedroom with your own walk-in closet, your own private balcony, and your own private bathroom. And this is a nice feature. With a lot of us working from home these days, you got an office right in the front of your house with its own separate private entrance. And I do really love this one acre lot. And this is an amazing location. You are in close proximity to King of Prussia, Paoli, Collegeville, very close to downtown Phoenixville, and just a three minute drive away from the local treasure, Valley Forge National Park. Man, I've always wanted a skylight in my shower. Okay, I'll go back to my presentation, but that was my listing video that I did for one of my recent listings. Um, I am a, I'm also a musician and um, I do love to, uh, I love writing songs and all that stuff. And so this is a, this is kind of a way that I, that I do that as well. So, um, all right, here we go. All right, so you guys got me, got me back, okay. Um, so also as far as videos and all that stuff, we will list your home on the MLS. Um, the MLS is the multiple listing service. That is where all homes on Zillow and realtor.com, that's where they originate. So the multiple listing service is what the realtors use to list homes. And, um, that syndicates to over 300 websites, which is Zillow, realtor.com, Trulia, all the, all the places, um, and important to note that the MLS is filled with serious pre-qualified buyers that are already working with real estate agents that are actively looking and ready to purchase. So it's really smart to list on the MLS. Um, people that are just on Zillow, they're looking, but they're not always qualified. Uh, and, you know, I just want to say this, and this is, you know, the only salesy thing I'll kind of say, but for sale by owner versus using a realtor, um, if you went skydiving, would you want to pack your own parachute? or have the person who packs parachutes for a living do it. Um, that is a very dramatic example, yes, but it's also true. Um, for sale by owners, we'll make 17% less on their home sales because they didn't put it on the MLS. And with realtors only charging 6%, we more than pay for ourselves. Um, we also have the technology for showings, like, you know, we uh, makes it very easy for realtors just to book showings, and we handle all your marketing A to C. Um, and again, we're trying to achieve getting the most money with the least amount of hassle for you. Um, and then knowing what buyers want. And uh, so, you know, if you put your buyer's hat on, you know, try to understand the way buyers think. A good realtor will know this because they're in and out of homes with buyers all the time. Uh, most people that are selling their home, it's hard for them to scrutinize their own home like they would if they were looking to buy it themselves. Um, 
And so knowing what buyers want, um, you want the buyer who's going to pay the most money for your house. So who is that? Well, it's not an investor. An investor is going to pay cash. They're going to want a discount for cash. And they're also going to want a discount because they need to make money on your home. So you want its end user, which is generally a family or a first time home buyer or something like that. Um, again, millennials make up 60% of the buying market. So it's a really great uh, time to sell as well for that. Um, also, people downsizing. These folks really will have the money to, uh, to buy as well because they're getting rid of a bigger asset and going to a smaller asset. Um, so buyers want things to be move-in ready and updated or at least clean and decluttered and well-maintained. Again, if your roof is 20 years old, it, 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 would, it would behoove you to put a new roof on uh, right before you sell it, or just realize that you're going to probably get 15,000 less than you want to get, you know, as, as a premium price. Um, also usable patio space, I tell you, um, it really has become the new kitchen, as we say, uh, ki kitchens used to sell homes and they still do. Um, everyone wants a nice kitchen, but uh, patio space has become equally as important to buyers. Uh, I've walked through houses with buyers and they're like, it's beautiful, but just there's no outside space. So we're not interested. And uh, that could be a deal breaker for a lot of buyers. And then uh, just, you know, knowing what buyers want, uh, it's going to deliver you the most money. And so that's just what we're after. And uh, I didn't want to make this presentation so long. So that's the last slide. And uh, we're on to questions. So I'd say fire away. If anyone's got questions, I'll stop sharing here, Sean. All right. So let me, uh, all right, that works. So I got a couple here. Um, and if anybody has any, feel free to leave them in the chat there. Um, so for an older person who is looking to move into like a senior living community, how long should they allow to sell before, you know, moving into a spot like Barclay Friends? So as far as um, a typical, well, I'll break it down a few different ways. Um, if you do everything right and you put your house on the market, it should sell within the first 15 days. It should sell within the first week if, if we do it right. Um, so you can figure on the long end of things, you'll sell your home in 30 days. And then settlement, um, a quick settlement is about 35 days, uh, medium settlements 30 or 45 days, and then also a longer settlement is 60 days. Uh, what we try and do, and so what's great about this market and when you're moving and say you need to sell and you wanna take advantage of the good market now, but you're like, I don't need to leave for another three months. You can do what's called a rent back. And so we can negotiate that prior to accepting a buyer's offer because if there's 10 offers on the table, they'll do anything to get their offer accepted, trust me. And so what we do is we negotiate, hey, we will sell it to you. We're gonna close in 45 days, but then my, my seller is gonna then turn and rent back your property from you for the next 60 days. And so that's, that's an easy negotiation. We do that all the time, but that's a great question. Um, someone asked, I have a stair glide in my home now should you know would it be good to remove it for the sale or is that a deal breaker it's not um it's it's it is good if it's not usable or you're not using it you don't have to use it um i i would because most buyers are probably going to take it out um yeah i i would say i would say if you can uh but if it's a huge ask or a huge task just you know just leave it in it's not going to highly detract from the sale it's just going to be a maintenance item that someone's going to to do if your boiler was old it'd be worth updating that or or if you, you know something like that but a stair a stair glider is like you know and you never know you might find the person that wants one or may need one so i would say it's not a super priority over general maintenance items very nice good um, question yeah, uh, someone noticed in the video that it showed the home without furnishing. Um, is that okay to do or would it be better to have the furnishings in there? So in a perfect world, it's nice to stage it at some level, like even, again, just anchor pieces like, uh, you know, a table in the dining room and, you know, a, a couch in the kitchen. Um, there are 
staging companies out there and all that. I'll tell you what, with, with an aggressive pricing strategy, you'll sell it so fast it won't matter. But um, so a lot of times we do think it's best to have some furniture in because again, it helps the buyer come through and envision the space and just go, oh yeah, oh, this looks great. I might put the couch over there, but I like this space. Whereas if it's empty fully, um, they're just looking at all the imperfections in the paint and the walls and, and all that stuff. But, uh, but yeah, not a deal breaker either way, but more ideal to have the anchor pieces in if you can. And I know you, you kind of touched on whether or not to update an outdated kitchen beforehand. Uh, what about upgrading the major appliances? Cause that, would that be, you know, attractive to a buyer? Yeah. So if a kitchen is really clean and, um, I would say it would depend on the age of the appliances. If, if the appliances are really outdated, it would absolutely help. And your, if your kitchen's clean, it's going to just look, make it shine more. And even if they wanted to redo some of the countertops or even the cabinets, they still would have those appliances. So yes, I would say that's a, that's a, that's a really good thing to do. Very cool. And yeah. I can say, so this is the last call for questions. Um, but while I wait, I will say that I've recorded today's presentation I miss just the intro, so it kind of starts at that first point. But I'm, I'm glad I remembered to press the button. We got all of the uh, the information there. I'm going to send it to everybody who RSVP'd or attended today, um, so that you have it. Um, and one did come in there. Uh, did, do you leave curtains in the house? So yeah, there's there's um, it's a funny thing, and it's a good question. So there's there's fixtures and personal property. So they're two different things. So a fixture is this, you know, uh, this ceiling fan that is affixed to the wall. Um, but a personal property is my painting. And so if I took the painting off the wall, the, the nail is actually a fixture, believe it or not. So you kind of want to keep your, your paintings on the wall so you don't have to pull the nail out and repatch and repaint everything. That's sort of another trick. Um, but, uh, but yes, and also the reason that became really popular is because the big flat screen TVs, uh, they were they were actually, um, they would come for the day of settlement and the, screen, the TV itself is your personal property, but the armature, which it hangs on is a fixture. And so what they were, what was happening is people were just ripping the whole thing out. People would walk through on the day of settlement and see some big holes in the, in the wall. And so they, the, the board of realtors decided that. So with curtains, the actual curtains, the, the fabric and material, they are a personal property and they, they can come with you if you want to take them. Uh, but the, the rods, the curtain rods, they need to stay. And uh, if, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of buyers will want the curtains only because it's, you know, it's custom to the house and it fits or whatever like that. But all of that is really uh, able to be negotiated. And uh, yeah, that's a, but that's a great question. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. That's all I had. Um, just in closing, I wanted to thank everybody for coming out. And yeah. thank you, Chris, for uh, joining us today. That was great. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. And if, if anyone wants to talk offline, I mean, Sean, you got my contact information. You can contact Sean or Faith. And I'm happy to, you know, again, I, I am, a, we are a customer service model. I'm not a, hard sell guy. I, I give out uh, free estimates on comps and, and, you know, people always call me and say, what's my home worth? I'm not selling. I'm not selling. And I'm not the guy that's going to give you a, a comparable market analysis and then call you for the rest of your life every month saying, are you selling yet? Are you selling yet? Are you selling yet? That's, that's just not how I work. So if anyone's interested in what their home's worth, I'm happy to do run a market analysis for them. Absolutely. Well, thanks yeah. everybody and everybody have a great night. All right. Thanks, everyone.